Uh, my name is uh, Dr. Sherman Silber. I'm an infertility doctor from St. Louis, and uh, I have uh, been a, a shareholder in coming to this meeting for 23 years, and I want to thank you very much for making my grandchildren very rich. <laughs> <laughs> And they sometimes compare me in the medical world to infertility uh, world as the uh, uh, Berkshire Hathaway of infertility because I'm so old and I come from a relatively small community. But uh, I'm wondering about your interest in not just Apple, but all of the tech stocks like Amazon and Google because you've avoided them, you stated in the past, because they're complicated, you should stick with something you understand. On the other hand, Amazon and Google have what you call a very durable competitive advantage. They really hardly have any competitor. And that's true in China, too, of Alibaba and Tencent. So it seems like it's a conflict, and I'm wondering if you're going to be turning the corner and going into these tech companies that seem to have no serious competition. Well, we certainly looked at them, and we, we, we don't think of whether we should be in tech companies or not or that sort of thing. We, we are looking for things where we, we do get into the durability of the competitive advantage and whether we think that our opinion is, might be better than other people's opinion in assessing the probability of the durability, in the, uh, so to speak. Uh, but the truth is that uh, I've watched Amazon from the start, and I, I think what Jeff Bezos has has done is something close to a miracle. And, and the problem is if I think something will be a miracle, I tend not to bet on it. Uh, the, uh, it would have been better, far better, obviously, if, we, if I'd had some insights into certain businesses. But, you know, in fact, Bill told me early on, Bill Gates told me early on, you know, that, that I think I was on all of this in the suggested I turn to Google, but the trouble is I, I saw that Google was, was, uh, was skipping past all of this, and then I wondered if anybody could skip past Google. So, and I saw at Geico that we were paying a lot of money for something that cost them nothing incrementally. So we've looked at it, and you know, I made a mistake in, 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 in not being able to come to a conclusion where I really felt that, that at the present prices that that the prospects were far better than the prices indicated. And uh, uh, I didn't go into Apple because it was a tech stock in the least. I mean, that, I went into Apple because I made certain, came to certain conclusions about, about both the intelligence with, with the capital would be employed, but more important, about the value of an ecosystem and how permanent that ecosystem could be and what the threats were to it and a whole bunch of things. and. That didn't, I don't think that required me to, you know, take apart an iPhone or something and figure out what all the components were or anything. It, it, it was more, it's much more the nature of consumer behavior. And some things uh, strike me as having a lot more permits than others. But the answer is we'll miss a lot of things that, or I'll miss a lot of things that, that I don't feel I understand well enough. And there's, there's there is no, penalty in investing if you don't swing a, a ball that's in the strike zone, as long as you swing at something at some point and, you know, eventually that you find the pitch, pitches you like. And that's the way we'll continue to do it. We'll try to stay within our circle of competence. And, and uh, Charlie and I generally agree on, on uh, sort of where that circle ends and uh, what, what kind of situations where we might have some kind of an edge in our reasoning or our experience or something that uh, where we might evaluate something differently than other people. But the answer is uh, we're going to miss a lot of things. Charlie? Yeah, we have a wonderful system. If one of us is stupid in some area, so is the other. <laughs> and of course, we were not ideally located to be high-tech wizards. You know, uh, how many people of our age 
quickly mastered Google. I've been to Google headquarters. They look to me like they're, it looks like a kindergarten. <laughs> a very rich kindergarten. Yes. <laughs> No, it's, it's, it's extraordinarily impressive what they've done. And like I said, Geico, we were paying them a lot of money uh, at the time they went public. And, and, and all three of them, the main characters, Eric and Laria and Sergey, uh, they actually came and saw me, but they were more than talking about going public and the mechanics of it and various things along that line. But it wasn't like what they were doing was a mystery to me. The mystery was how much competition would come along and how effective they would be, uh, and whether it would be a game where four or five people were slugging it out without making as much money as they could if one company dominated. Those are, those are tough decisions to make. You can have industries where there's only two people in it, and they still aren't very, very good because they beat each other's brains out, and that's one of the questions in the airline business. It's, it's a better business now than it used to be, but, but it used to be suicide. So, uh, and you know that the competitive uh, the competitive factors are are extraordinary in in airlines. And how much better business is it with with uh, four people operating at 85 percent capacity than it was at with seven or eight operating in the mid 70s and with more planes around? Those are tough decisions, but. Uh, I made the wrong decision on, on Google and Amazon. I just, I really consider that a miracle that you could be doing Amazon web services and, and changing retail at the same time uh, with, you know, without enormous amounts of capital and do it with the speed and effectiveness of what Amazon has done. I just, I, would, I underestimated. Uh, I had a very, very, very high opinion of Jeff's ability when I first met him, and I underestimated him. <laughs> Charlie? Well, my comment would be that the shareholders have one thing to be thankful for. Some of the age-related stupidity at headquarters has been ameliorated by Ted and Todd joining us. We are looking at the world with the aid of some younger eyes now, and they've had a contribution significant beyond their own investments and so you're you're very lucky to have them you shareholders because there's a lot of ignorance in the older generation that needs removal this question comes from uh, Key Lee and actually is directly about the issue of moats uh, <laughs> He notes that uh, Elon Musk this week on his Tesla earnings call said the following, quote, I think moats are lame. They are like nice in a sort of quaint vestigial way. And if your only defense against invading armies is a moat, you will not last long. What matters is the pace of innovation. That is the fundamental determinant of competitiveness, unquote. So Warren, it seems the world has changed. Business is getting more competitive, pace of innovation, technology is impacting everything. Is Elon right? Let me well, answer he that one, Warren. Elon says a conventional moat is quaint, and that's true of a puddle of water. And he says that the best moat would be to have a big competitive position, and that is also right. You know, it's, a, it's ridiculous. Warren does not intend to build an actual moat. <laughs> Even though they're quaint. Yeah. <laughs> There's certainly a great, a great number of businesses. This has always been true, but it does seem like it 